The color, design, and subtleties of Amish quilts fascinate those of us who sew and quilt. Perhaps you've even made a faux Amish quilt. Well, today's guest has spent time working with Amish quilters, making their acquaintances, swapping stories, and learning the techniques behind many of the quilt designs. I'd like you to welcome Claudine Hansen. And Claudine, your stories are almost as fascinating as the quilt techniques. Thank you very much for inviting me to share those stories. The techniques can be easy compared to the stories that go with the quilt. The history of that quilting process can be as fascinating as the sewing process. For example, a little girl's Amish quilt is often made by tracing around a postcard, cutting out the rectangles while learning her colors. The postcard quilt is the first quilt we're going to show. Amish quilt stories and techniques, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala sewing cabinets, hand-built in the USA by American craftsmen, customized for you. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. With our program called Amish Quilt Stories and Techniques, we're going to start with the story part of our first quilt, the postcard quilt. A little girl would make this as her first introduction to quilting and cutting. Yes, it would be. Sometimes even before they start school, they would learn to trace around an actual postcard. Mm -hmm. And the postcard here is full size, and you've made yours miniature. Yes, they did. It is much easier <laughs> to display the miniature quilts in your home, so it was a more practical solution to making a postcard quilt. And the little girl would also learn her colors and how to work with color. And the, I think the subtlety of Amish quilts is what you see, that they have the greens to blues, the reds. I really like that little touch, uh, that nuance. The color change is what makes them unique and uh -huh. different from quilts that are chain piece today. And so these were individually cut and then placed, often by the child, into an arrangement that they would enjoy. And then grandma or mom would help put it together. Absolutely. So the story is pretty interesting, I think extremely interesting. And then also the Amish choose colors to wear that are in three-fourths of the color wheel. Yes. The gold and orange and bright yellow colors are seldom or, or never worn by the Amish. But bright colors in the rest of the color wheel are definitely mm -hmm. used, especially in their children's clothing. So we have leftovers from the remnants of something that would have been cut out from a little girl's or little boy's, little girl's probably top. Yes. And then the little girl would... She would put her favorite mm -hmm. postcard on and she would trace around it so that she could then proceed to cut around this and make the <laughs> shapes that she would need for her quilt. Now, the shapes that we have in this miniature are two and a half by one and a half, so they're small. Yes, they're very small. Here are some larger pieces that'll show a little bit about mm -hmm. what they could look like. We'll just lay these. So this is the postcard size that we have, and then after laying these out, she would do a little sewing, very yes. very simple. They would be stitched together with the short edges touching and making it in long rows. So here's just a close up of just showing those, sewing the short ends. I think you can all manage that very easily. And then rather than sewing and chain piecing as we might do today, their technique is to do two and then put it back. Yes. Do two, put it back. The child would be putting them back and learning to arrange them and keep mm -hmm. things organized as they worked. They would then have help stitching the blocks together. Now, Arranging the colors yeah. is part of the fun for the child and it keeps their interest long sure. enough to work on the quilt. When the rows are stitched together, you will notice that the ends of each of the rows has an extra yes. segment. And at that point, an adult would help them cut that off so that the rows on the quilt 
and up evenly. Well, we, you've taught me, Claudine, about when you made acquaintance with Amish quilters is that they don't work that hard at this. They don't do a lot of measuring. You know, a postcard, the, the fabric may not be on grain. It may be on grain. They just utilize right. everything. They use the fabric they have. And then after it has been sewn together into columns, after the rows have been created, then the columns, columns. stitched. The, I mean, this coloration, you, which you've mimicked to an actual Amish quilt, yes. is pretty bold to have this red next to the purple. Yes. It's powerful design. The colors give it the power. They give mm -hmm. it the life. And they are very exciting to look at. But in addition to that, we also have the quilting designs. Yes. And the quilting designs in this particular piece varied in the stair step design that was mm -hmm. here and then the diagonals so that you have a little variety in the texture of what's going on. When we get to the outside edge, curved quilting often looks nice with all of the angular pieces. Yes. So then the curved quilting is added on the edges. So in the borders, as we look out further to the edge of the quilt, the borders have a stencil. You're going to learn more about borders as we progress during yes. this series, how they're cut. But notice that the little corners are a subtle color mm -hmm. and the borders are dark to, to add contrast and this is really an amazing study in color. It's got a lot of vibrancy and as you said the, the power is in the color. So the postcard quilt, an Amish child's first quilt. The Amish dress is referred to as plain clothing, yet the remnants from shirts, dresses, pants, and blouses that are used to create quilts are anything but plain. This miniature quilt features the Amish bars design. The quilt is built from the center out, combining contrasting fabrics in whatever size is convenient for the quilt maker. The focal point of the quilt is the hand stitching. That's what's valued in the Amish community. Learn the fascinating way that the design is assembled. When Claudine first shared to me the stories behind these quilts, it was a very simplistic approach to the way the quilts are put together. Not a lot of planning ahead. Not really. The bars quilt is especially pleasing when the qu quilt maker has not decided exactly what size she wants to do the quilt. <laughs> <laughs> so she would use whatever strip sizes she could cut. Yes, and they could then be left rectangular, as mm -hmm. I have here, or they could be cut square, depending on the finished size that she wants the quilt to be. And you mentioned to me that they may make the center section put it on their bed to see if they'd add more bars or make it square or long or whatever they'd like. Absolutely. Putting it on a bed is a good way to try out how <laughs> it's going to look and determine what you're going to add for borders. You know, we often audition fabric, so they're just auditioning the size on, on whatever bed they're making this for. Yes. <laughs> we have uh, the miniature done here. Again, it could be in any size. You can see how it's built very simplistically, but the the combination of colors is intense. The colors need mm -hmm. to be those strong, bold colors in order to portray that Amish influence on the quilt. So this one has the bars, and then this one has more bordering than some of the other quilts. It's very simple to mm -hmm. do the long stitching and end up with the bars that are straight. Now they would sew these bars together with a treadle machine. Yes. And then the hand quilting, of course, is done. And we're not going to be demonstrating hand quilting today because I am not a good hand quilter. And mm -hmm. Claudine, you... I have had friends and neighbors help me do the quilting. It's pretty similar to the way it would be in the Amish sure. community. So we're going to show you the way of assembling them, and then you can quilt them according to your desire. So we have cut these strips one and a half inches wide. Yes. And the length can be just as if in an Amish community, any length you'd like. Mm -hmm. And then the borders are attached, mm -hmm. decided on first, and then attached. And the side borders would be attached, and then the length long borders would be attached. So it's kind of quilt as you go, decide as it you is, go. It's a decide as you go mm -hmm. process. Now the first border is quite a narrow one. The next one is a little bit wider. And we can just kind of go here. And it comes out here, like right. this. And the black really enhances the colors that we have going on so far. Brings out the strength of the rest of the colors. And if people have visited Amish communities or live near Amish communities, they may just see mainly the dress in black. Yes. But underneath, and for the children, it would be right. the brighter colors. And you also mentioned to me the various 
different colonies will have different color yes. ranges. There's different rules and slightly different favorites in different areas. Now this may be the color range of the Pennsylvania Dutch. It's a little quieter mm -hmm. color combination, but it's working well to portray that Amish look. And deciding the size of the borders is not necessarily geometric. Oh no, sometimes there's a favorite stencil. The Amish stores would have many stencils to choose from, and choosing the stencil first is a very practical approach to how big you want to make that final border. So make the border fit the stencil, not oh, the yes. stencil fit the border. <laughs> and then a medallion is a very common approach to have a medallion in the center of the design. And they might use a stencil that's way too large and only use the mm -hmm. center section. And that would be a way of adapting a stencil that they would purchase to the size of the quilt that they've chosen to make today. And then finally, some of the shapes are just made by simple household tools, yes. just by marking and on this area. And we are gonna show you uh, Claudine's miniature quilt once again to show you the stencil that was used in the border, the floral design, and then to radiate out, to echo the design, a bowl was simply used as a marking tool. So the beauty and the value in the Amish community is the hand quilting. Yes. And this certainly portrays this in this great miniature quilt. A four patch quilt block is nothing new to quilters, yet a close up look at this basic Amish design sewn in miniature shows the remarkable simplicity, vitality, and vibrancy that can be created from the most simple geometric pattern. Notice the subtle color changes within the block, a practical approach of using scraps that gives a unique, understated appearance. Now Claudine, when I look at your miniature quilt, I always, I always want to kind of look further because of the subtle fabric changes within the standard four patch block. Yes, that does add a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. When the Amish sort their fabrics, they would use color groups, not necessarily sure. color. So they would use many different pieces and then they would be working with those pieces and adding mm -hmm. black. And the black brings out those subtle color it, changes it, it, it that does. make it more exciting to look at. Now these quilts that we're showing you throughout this series are all in three-fourths of the color wheel, the blues, reds, yes. no, no mm -hmm. yellow or orange. Right. Because that's considered too boastful. Yes, they're way too bold for that communities. But yet, I have found when going to an Amish auction some quilts that were in those colors. Yes, they use those colors when they're making quilts for the tourists or for the auctions because they want them to look and perform in the <laughs> average home like we would expect them to. So we are showing you colors that would be used in the traditional Amish tradition. Yes. And again, scraps from clothing would be used, and mm -hmm. here we've grouped to mm -hmm. make the red, um, pink range, cho chosen some of the colorations that would be grouped together, and then yes. Detail the, the sewing technique. The sewing technique is very simple. They are then attached to a black strip. And if you use a short section, like these pieces, of each of the colors. Mm -hmm. So they just butt the ends together. And keep right on sewing mm -hmm. until they have a wide assortment of fabrics on the piece. Then they would press the seam allowance under the dark mm -hmm. so that when it, they get ready to sew the four patches together, the seam allowances will be easy to keep under control. Now we've used, since this is miniature, an inch and a fourth strip widths of the scraps. These are very tiny uh -huh. and they were fun to work with because they were so tiny. We will be straightening the edges before we start cutting and then we will cut the strips into the s small segments that need to be used to make the four patches. So you would cut one strip with many little pieces mm -hmm. like these and then you would match them up so that there would be different colors in each of the blocks. So you may find some waste because where you get the seam joined you may have some waste in this area yes. but that's not a problem and then... Certainly not a problem when we're working in miniatures. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so then they would choose here, here, this has a little bit more of a cherry and I'm going to match it with a burgundy. Well then we'd flip it around and then, as we like to say, kind of kiss those seam allowances because they're going in opposite directions. The black goes with the 
cherry color and then with sewing them together. And here we're using the traditional way, as you can see, of chain piecing together pairs. And after pressing open these chain pieces that I just stitched, then here you have the blocks. And they are some tiny yeah. blocks, but they are very fun to work with. And when you're looking at a small quilt, you don't want big blocks because then it would be very out of scale. So I'm going to do some layout. Now, this combination you copied from a traditional Amish quilt, and I don't, I have to say, I would have never chosen the pink to go with the red, but it's striking. It was an unusual combination, but it was um, traditional in yes. that culture, so it seemed mm -hmm. like a fun one to try. Exactly. And then the layout, or using gray in combination, they would be laid out, and then probably they wouldn't cut half square triangles. I don't think so. I think it would be more apt to be cutting the full square and then trimming off what's left on the outside edge. And we'll quickly discuss the stenciling design. They probably, to get the circular shape, just used a spool of thread and drawn around the spool of thread shape, and I'm not really doing this, just giving the idea. And this design, as you can see, gives a, some motion to the quilt. It enhances each one of those tiny blocks by having the curves come around the edge. So when I made another one, I had used a different color combination, a different format, and this time I decided to use a different type of quilting. So the quilting design on this one is very straight, very angular, mm -hmm. and does something totally different to the block. It makes it appear as if that little four patch is in the center of a gray square. So a lot of versatility using this simple technique and a great style as well. Amish quilts have great allure because of the harmony of color and the subtle visual appeal that is attractive without being too overpowering. The description certainly applies to this miniature Amish quilt arranged in the rail fence design. The technique, a first cousin to the four patch design, yet the image is truly unique of its own. Obviously, Claudine has worked with the miniatures. This could be made much larger, but this design certainly shows the subtle colorations within the greens, the reds, the blues. And, and you mentioned, Claudine, when you first did a study on these techniques, it was to study the pattern, the technique. Yes, I thought I was going to be studying all of the different patterns that the Amish favored. Discovered that I was soon studying their color combinations. The subtle changes from one shading of one color to another shading certainly made the quilt's simple designs mm -hmm. into something that attracts a lot of attention. And a, a very important key to Amish style quilting is the inner border. Yes, this it is certainly an inter is. interesting story. Mm -hmm. The inner border is almost never a color that's being used in the rest of the quilt. And in non Amish quilting, we often oh, use. Always. We the always color. choose those border colors. We certainly do. And so this one shows a different color mm -hmm. in the inside border. Kind of a brandy wine color that. I, truthfully, I would have never chosen, but it, it works. It works well together. Mm -hmm. This is, a, as I mentioned, a first cousin to the four patch design, yes. the same sewing techniques. Exact same sewing techniques. Very easy to do, all mm -hmm. straight sewing, useful for using up a lot of little scraps. And then when they're stitched, then they are cut into squares so that they can be turned horizontal or vertical into the final design. And you've started to lay out a, a design. This is one that really does have to be laid out or else oh. it can be well, very easily have mistakes in the piece. Yes, and you have so to it's... watch this step go and I think I have it in the wrong direction. <laughs> Do I? So they're gonna go step, step by step down the rows so that when you're ready to quilt them, they can easily be that makes oh. me feel better there. I think that's the it right It does one. look a little better that way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you have to lay it out. So that we have just certainly used, used the, the style that we have here, and here we have one that's put together, and you can see this unusual color on the border on the outside, mm -hmm. and then additional color was added, the size of a stencil. So the stencil width has been designed here. So the four patch and the rail fence are working with the same design, same basic design of fabric, but all the different technique that you can feature just by using some simple colors. I hope you'll enjoy.
During the Nancy's Corner segment today, you're going to hear an inspirational story about Quilters Without Border, piecing together a better future for Mongolian women. It all started with an email, an email received by today's guest. I'd like you to meet Maggie Ball. Maggie's a quilter from the Seattle area and received this email along with 70 other quilters in the United States, but Maggie was the only one that responded. Maggie, an interesting story. Yes, it all began in 2003, and I so could have easily uh, clicked on delete for that email, but I thought this looks interesting. Uh, it was a lengthy email about how p awful the conditions are in Mongolia. There's very high unemployment and abuse of women and alcoholism, and there's no support system for the women. And this young Mongolian woman, Selenga Serendash, had a vision to um, develop a community center where the women could come, uh, a safe place for them to be together socially, and where they could learn to quilt. She had visited the States and saw quilts and thought this would be an ideal activity for Mongolian women because uh, they already have the hand-cranked Russian sewing machines, even the nomadic families mm -hmm. um, have those and they're very good seamstresses and they have clothing that they can recycle. So while this is not a traditional craft in Mongolia, it's very suitable for them because uh, they can get started right away without purchasing new supplies. And you were the conduit to teach the women how to do the quilting. That's right, they needed some expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and they had done a little quilting with one Mongolian woman who had worked for an American family and learnt some quilting. Um, but she went to another area, so they had just made one quilt with her from shirting remnants, and then they needed some expertise and help. And the, you went there, but before you went there, you did some research so that the design that you chose to teach them was a very familiar design. Yes, they wanted to make items that they could sell to tourists so that uh, they could raise some money. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I de decided to do was teach this Mongolian pattern, the Oldsi, which is a very traditional pattern that's been around for hundreds of years. And it uh, is often painted on the door of the ge, which is the Mongolian yurt. And it brings long life and prosperity to the people who live there and also um, drives away evil spirits and wild animals. So you adapted that design, the Olgi. Am I saying it correctly? Oldsi. Oldsi, excuse mm -hmm. me. And taught them at first how to piece together the design. That's right. Um, I taught them the block and also taught them how to make the tote bag. And the tote bag is made from the, the material that is used in the yurt, correct? That's right. The, it's uh, a canvas. The, mm -hmm. the yurt is lined with this lightweight canvas and then has a thick layer of felting for insulation because it's very cold in winter and then oh. has a heavy canvas over the outside. And this one's made mm -hmm. from blue denim. Um, so the, uh, the women have then developed um, to other products uh, with this symbol. And also yeah. in Mongolia, they yeah. practice Tibetan Buddhism. And in uh -huh. the Buddhist religion, it means never ending cycles of life and death and the universe because it's an, a never ending knot that goes on and sure. on. Sure. And you taught them with hand crank sewing machines? Yes, the nomadic women have those and they're more, more comfortable than with electric machines. Um, we did have a sewing machine company send some electric uh -huh. machines over and we can use those in the city, but power is a little intermittent and the women who come in are really more comfortable with the hand crank machines and they're very good seamstresses. You told me an interesting story about a woman who you taught how to make the piece work. You went on a little trip to the countryside and two weeks later she had made how many designs? She made um, 45 bags <laughs> in, in just 10 days and um, we, I thought, oh dear, oh. I've created a sweatshop here. Yeah. But she was very excited because um, their national holiday was coming up and uh -huh. she was able to sell all the bags um, at their national holiday. So you took it upon yourself to go there, live with the women, but that's not all. You, you've gone back two other times. Yes, the second time I went, um, we had a quilt show in Mongolia, the first international quilt show there and in collaboration with quilters from the United Kingdom and Japan. And so uh, Leslie Coles, a quilt teacher from England, uh -huh. came with her sister, and a group of ladies from Japan came. 
so we had Japanese, American, English, and Mongolian quilts. Wonderful. Well, there's so much to learn about this Quilters Without Borders from Maggie. Maggie's going to join us next time on the Nancy's Corner of Sewing with Nancy because she has done some amazing fundraising to help build a program and a center for the women. So stay tuned. We'll have more also on Amish quilting in our next segment of Sewing with Nancy. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Nancy and Claudine Hansen have written a fully illustrated book entitled Amish Quilt Stories and Techniques, which includes all the information from this two-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com 2323. Order item number BK2323, Amish Quilt Stories and Techniques, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. For more, go to SewingWithNancy.com and follow Nancy on Facebook and Twitter. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Cabinets, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.